Alors, bonjour tout le monde. Je me présente, je suis Mélanie Robitaille. Alors, exceptionnellement, aujourd'hui, la vidéo sera en anglais. Alors, euh, pour les personnes qui ne me connaissent pas, je suis naturopathe depuis plus de 26 ans et je travaille avec les informations que Medical Medium Anthony William partage. So, uh, I will start in English now. So, I'm very pleased, Dr. Fan, to have you as a guest today. So, thank you for spending a couple of uh, minutes from your busy schedule with uh, us today. Thank you for having me here. It's an honor to uh, to be on and, and talk about uh, the information that hopefully will serve everybody. Yes, exactly. So I want to present you um, so who you are. So uh, Dr. Fan is a doctor of internal medicine practicing in the U.S. Um, and it's uh, exactly in Spring, a, call, a city called Spring, close to Austin in Texas. And uh, he graduated from Texas Tech University Health Science Center, and he completed his residency at University of Texas, Houston. So, and Dr. Fan, I met him, uh, I've heard a couple of times, medical medium, you know, say, hey, Dr. Fan is there, hello. Dr. Fan is very well known in the medical medium um, community. And he's well known for his um, amazing compassion and practice. So, um, and I met him through uh, different programs that Muniza Hamid offered. And he's very funny. He likes to remove the stress in a situation. So <laughs> I'm very happy to have you here today, Dr. Fan. I'm very honored that you accept uh, this invitation. Thank you, thank you for having me again. Anything to uh, help others and, and, and bring more information to them, empower people with information that Anthony William gives. And we're trying to marry the medical information, conventional medicine, with uh, the information that Anthony has given. And in the latest year or two, you're seeing more and more medical journals and articles <clears throat> taking his information and backing it up, supporting it. So if you, if you ever get curious, get on Google. And write, uh, you know, Epstein Barr virus and uh, and and multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. Google those topics, and you'll see a lot of stuff he says uh, are supported by the, the literature now. Exactly, exactly. As as you said, he written that um, um, MS is uh, caused by Epstein Barr, and now it's well known. It's publicly known by um, all the science and the doctors. So. Uh, I would like to know how did you discover medical media? Um, <clears throat> so I I, uh, I trained as internist and was actually a hospitalist when I first came out. That was more than 20 years. I think it was 20 more than 20 years ago. I'm not doing the math right, but uh, meaning I only saw patients in the hospital. So I get cases where I didn't know what to do. And I would have six different specialists come in and they were like, well, The patient's not dying, well, you know, why don't you send them home? Because the hospital is for a place for the very sick or the dying. And so I would send them home to, to allow the, the doctors as an outpatient in the clinic to work them up and do whatever they have to do non-urgently because hospitals are very expensive. And then a month or two later, they come back with the same symptoms. They, they had seen the other specialists outside and they couldn't figure it out. So I just like, well... It, Some things we don't, we can't explain. We don't know in, in conventional medicine. Um, and then when I transitioned to clinic medicine only where I got away from the hospital because it takes a lot of time. I love it, but uh, it's very time consuming. <clears throat> and I wanted to be near my family. So I opened my own clinic and I started gravitating to more alternative approaches. And I was looking for answers for my family members and for my own patients. So I went through a lot of different alternative practitioners I think many of our your listeners probably have done that. They spent a lot of money, a lot of time. And I won't say that I wasted the money, but I, I learned the hard way. You see a lot of people recommending this and that. And I fell for many of those as a doctor. So I, I kind of, I know that journey of people looking for answers and like, wow, this must be the next best thing. And then it kind of falls flat and you just feel very let down. And uh, so... Um, One of these days, I think I was listening to Hay House Radio, 
And I heard Anthony come on the radio station and I was like, that's intriguing. What he's saying makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when his book came out, I, and actually, I actually got a session with him prior to the, I think, prior to the book coming out. So that's wow. how I heard Anthony. And, and within like, we implemented something for our family member and we had gone to all these different alternative doctors and didn't work very well. We saw some changes in him. So I said, hey, there's there's something there. Okay. So I think that answers how did I find him, right? And the way that I continue with it with this is that when I think about treatment, I think about risk benefit ratio. What is the risk? What is the benefit? And when you're using medication, when you're writing prescription, when you're ordering a, a, um, a test, MRI, CAT scan, you have to figure out what is the risk of that and will it give me information that will be helpful and won't hurt me. Mm. So if you look at celery juice, what is the risk? What is the benefit? Well, the risk is that you'll have loose stools, maybe urinate more. You have to spend more money on it. The, ratio, the benefits are many. Blood pressure, skin, bowel movements, all these different things. So this is how I, I evaluated when I first got into Anthony Williams' information. And I started giving my patients, hey, try this, try a little bit of this. And it seemed to work. It didn't hurt them. It actually helped. So, so I got more into it um, as the years went by. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I, yes, and my father, I said, you know, I will meet Dr. Fan. And he had a question about celery juice. So may I ask? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he asked me, my father is going to be 80 at, by the end of this month. I love him. I love my both, both of my parents. And he said, could you ask Dr. Fan, you know, why when we stop drinking the celery juice, we don't eliminate with bowel movement as easy. So that was his question. So um, is, can you offer an answer for that? Yeah, I mean, number one is what does celery juice do? It hydrates you well, mm -hmm. right? So if you're not hydrating as much, there you go, right? The, the, the mineral salts that Anthony talks about, the special you know, sodium mineral salts, have a have a configuration that when they're intact, I mean they're not disturbed by other things like water or, or lemon, they help push things out of your system as well. Mm. So that's a simple answer there. I mean, there's probably one of these days, 10 years from now, they do they'll do studies on this and they'll say, oh, we found these chemical, and they'll try to make a pill of, of celery juice. It's not mm -hmm. gonna work. And there are actually studies for celery juice uh reducing high blood pressure. I, I think it's like somewhere in Sri Lanka or somewhere, some journal somewhere out. But it's interesting that there are studies saying, hey, this does do something. Mm. Yes, that's great. I always suggest to continue with celery juice because it helped him a lot. So, and I would like to know um, also, what is your top three recommendations that when you see your clients, what is the, the, the most important thing that you, if you can, um, pick some a few of them. The most important thing is to keep on doing something. Okay. One of the one profiles, right? If you stop it, it's not going to work, right? So you have to realize though which one of it works. So what do you feel good about? What do you feel confident about? Like if you if you can't do celery juice every day, maybe you can only do it three times a day. You don't have to be perfect. So you make it easy on yourself, so you can set yourself up for success. Mm. right so pick something continue it if it's not causing problems if you're not sure talk to your practitioner talk to your doctor um so continue doing it is is really important because so many of my patients i've suggested every single time they come see me and they keep on forgetting to do it mm. so keep it consistent but keep it in a way that is easy for you to maintain mm. you don't have to be perfect mm. I think that's like three things in one, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> but keep it going and 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 do it in a way that's sustainable. So that's number one. Okay, good. The second thing is avoid the. Tr uh, sorry, the second thing is pay attention to your adrenals. Mm. And I think Manisa said this before. Like she asked him a question, like, "What's the most important thing that of all the medical medium stuff?" Right? And she thought it was going to be salary juice. She thought it was going to be B twelve. He's like watch your adrenals, keep your adrenals really stable. That means making sure your blood sugars are as stable as possible hmm. so that you're eating regularly, you're not stressing yourself out as, as little as possible. 
because adrenals play such a big role in your health. This is the secret about grazing. This is the secret about not getting overstressed. Everything triggers your adrenals. And all these modalities of alternative treatment that are wondrous and so cool at the time are really typically working on your adrenals. Whether that's intermittent fasting, keto carnivore diet, high fat diets, uh, steroid types of supplements, you know, steroidal effect supplements, they work on your adrenals. So the adrenals are so, so important. Yes. People underestimate the, the power of each adrenally snacking. That's so important what you say. It's um um I I hope everyone that speak uh, a little bit um English, you know, get that what you said about the the hip, you know, the hip uh um uh cleansing or the hip whatever that people think that it will help. It's because it's triggering their adrenals and it's not really working. And you have to be able to have strong adrenals so that it can kind of work. Because if you have weak, weak adrenals, it won't even work. Yeah, you can burn out your adrenals by doing it. You might feel good initially, but then you burn it out and then you go crash and then you feel bad. Yes. So it's important to really work on the adrenals and keep them as safe as possible. I'll, you're not going to avoid stress. You're not going to avoid that stuff, but to the best that you can help them to be, to be, to be healthy as much as possible. Amazing. That's great. So that's your second top three yeah. recommendation. And what would be your third one? The third one is, you know, there's so many, right? There's so many, maybe off the top of my head would be like, avoid the troublemaker foods. Okay. As simple as that. I mean, People are like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm avoiding it, kind of. And it's like, you always hear them when they're talking, are you avoiding dairy? Yeah, as much as I can. And what does that mean? It means they're still getting it. And you mm -hmm. won't know. It stays in your system for 90 days, perhaps. So you're like, well, you can't correlate that. You don't know, you know, how you feel off of dairy. I'm less bloated. Unless you pay attention to it, you really don't know. So get mm -hmm. off those foods, look into the labels. Is, it, is there ghee? Is there, is there butter? in this cookie is there eggs in this cookie you know exactly. so those are the simple simple things i would say that's great i've discovered that sometimes here uh it's being missed the canola oil you know that in in some mm -hmm. prepared food yes. and um sometimes clients wonder why i don't have result but there are some foods as you said that uh, uh that um are nourishing viruses that it's are not really good. So um, to read the label and to be careful with that, I love it. And my last question, thank you so much. My last question is a little bit, uh, I would say um, delicate. Uh, sometimes I have clients that says, you know, I want to remove my medication and it's not my expect uh, ex expertise. You know, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a naturopath. So I say, you know, go to your medical doctor to start a weaning, um, you know, um, uh, schedule something with, with the doctor. So is there something you would like to add so that um, people that say, you know, it's, it's important because it can be very dangerous to stop medication, uh, cold turkey, um, and uh, I would love that people can realize, you know, um, that working in team with it, with their doctor, they can, you know, maybe if it's something possible to to wean or to diminish if their symptoms are better. So is there something that you 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 can say about that? So I find myself in that position a lot, too, because a, a patient will come to me as a general practitioner and they have their specialist who's giving them this medication and they want to get off of it. So it's hard. You have to gauge. You have to gauge your client. I mean, if you're already practicing as a naturopath or a coach or something, you kind of know that your client wants the more natural approach. So you can be a bit more free in thinking. Okay, this is this is something they, that their end goal is to get off the medication. Um, but if you've been on the medication for 20 years, think about what happens. I mean, you stop abruptly. Your body goes into shock, and it's like well, it doesn't have that anymore. So. In terms of a, as a practitioner, you have to be thinking about liability. Like if you tell a person, yeah, get off that medicine, you're fine. 
and they have all these complications, it's not good for the patient. It's not good for you. It's not good for your practice or your license. Okay. So you want to work with your doctor. Now let's suppose like many doctors, they're not into medical medium. They're not into that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can still work with them. You can say, look, doc, I want you to reduce it. What's the most safest way I can do this? Um, and some of them will, okay, well, let's do this and we can do this. Um, sometimes the doctor will say, no, there's no way you can do that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to stop it abruptly. You do want to work on the protocols. So let's say you have a thyroid issue and you've been on it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Get on the protocol. Make sure you're on those things. Make sure you're avoiding those foods. Make sure you're helping your adrenals out, as we talked about. And then... You will expect the numbers for thyroid to be high when you get off. The TSH, for instance, will go high when you reduce your thyroid medication. Mm -hmm. Your body's used to it. Think about your body, you're lifting weights, right? And every time you go lift weights, you have somebody who helps you, like a trainer spotter, mm -hmm. right? You take that spotter away. <laughs> like, ah, you know, your, your, your body's not used to it. So yeah. if you take away the thyroid medicine that your body's used to doing, the body's like, oh, I have to wake up and do help now. I, I don't, I'm so out of shape. I don't remember how to do it. Mm -hmm. And you remember that, how do you feel? You look at symptoms more importantly than, than numbers sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't tell for everybody because a lot of people are in denial of their symptoms. Like, oh, I'm fine. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Or I'm fine. You have to be very kind of mindful of that. So go slow. There's ways to cut pills in half. There's ways to take pills six days out of the week instead of seven. It just depends on the medication. And that's where everybody's a little different. Mm -hmm. If it's heart medication, you know, you swell up when you stop taking a, a diuretic, it may not be good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this, this is how you do it. You have to use your judgment and it takes, ex it takes experience a lot of times as a, as a practitioner, whether you're allopathic or naturopathic or, you know, homeopathic, whatever, you know, holistic uh, style you follow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So I really uh, suggest to everyone who's listening to to um, work in team with their doctor to, if it's one of your goal to uh, uh, diminish um, your medication. Um, and it's very important, as you say, you know, to, to um, watch the symptoms, to go slowly and... Uh, and if people wants to do that with you, uh, is it something possible? So I, I have a lot of people sometimes contact me and ask if they can help work with me. Uh, I'll give you a couple of uh, things. Number one is, as a doctor, I cannot see you online. I'm not a physician online because it requires a physician-patient relationship is established. And I can't really do that online very well. You have to be seen in person, right? That's a little difficult for people who live far away. Yes. Uh, I do offer health consultations sometimes, but I recommend that you work with somebody like a practitioner like you or whomever before. So you have the basics down. Because if I'm spending my time saying, look, you, you need to get off gluten. I, I know it's organic gluten, but it's still gluten. Mm -hmm. Then you're not using the time wisely with me because I have, I could talk to you for three hours and you, you don't want to talk to me three hours. Yeah. But, but you really want to get the basics down and a practitioner can really help you do that. So you can answer little like specifics that you know, because you've gone through it, mm -hmm. right? You've done these cleanses, you do these things. Um, now, when it comes to stuff like medical questions, diagnostic tests, medications, specialists, I can give you a general overview. Of, hey, look, this is important. Or do you really need that test? Because what are you going to do with that test? Are you really going to take this medication if the test is positive? If you're not going to take the medication, don't do the test. Mm -hmm. So it'll save you. Hopefully, it'll save you some time and stuff like this. But again, it, it, it's busy. My my practice is I'm slow. I I, I take a lot of time with my patients, and I have to do charts and stuff like this. So I try not to do it unless somebody has a practitioner. Because me throwing out information for one hour or whatever it is, it's a lot to take in. So it's nice to have that practitioner to support them. And remind them, no, 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 this is what, you know, that you want Dr. Fan said, or this is what we should do. Uh, it's much more helpful for the patient than to just do one hour because he's a doctor. He must know. The benefit of me with a white coat is to give you the confidence that you can do things um, medically that's safe, that are safe. You can incorporate alternative stuff into your medical regimen that are safe. Mm. 
Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for those amazing advice and uh, sharing your time. And um, is there some words to um, finish that interview that you would like to, uh, to share with everyone that will listen? I, I think, I think maybe, you know, this is, I always tell people keep a light heart. Mm. It, it'll get you through sometimes you'll see other people getting better within three months or six months. And you're here, here, you know, you're very strict and you're like, I'm doing this exactly the way it's supposed to be. How come this person is doing, you know, yoga and backflips and doing everything. And I can't get to where I was before. because I was never that bad before. And so it's going to be really harsh. harsh. That's where you bring in the non physical stuff. The meditations, the, the calling on the angels, all these different things to help you push forward and, and remember that, hey, there were times before this. The nice thing about Anthony's information is he offers all that stuff. Not only the, the physical stuff that we need because we're, we're physical beings, right? We're living, we're spiritual beings, but we live in a physical world. We have to work on the physical. But he offers the spiritual stuff too. And it's nothing that's going to be $10,000. It's going to be, listen to this meditation, you know? imagine you know you're on the beach it's simple stuff you can empower yourself you can know more than 90 percent of doctors and alternative doctors if you learn this information i get really excited about that mm -hmm. so know that know that there's this stuff works uh, other people have seen the, the things you can get there too it may not be as fast or the, the straight approach and linear approach that you think it will be but it can help Mm. And, and do so in a reasonable way, obviously. And it just takes, you might need somebody else to help you along to kind of see where you're missing things. This is where a practitioner comes into play. Wow. It's the best closing uh, words. Keep keep a live heart. And you embody that. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel when things sometimes get serious or anything, you know, sometimes in the the uh, in, in the, the class we have uh, where you are, um, an administrator like you you help us you always bring light so you really embody that Dr. Fan so I really appreciate thank that <laughs> thanks try to so thank you and I will uh, write all the information at the, the description of the video and um, thank you again yeah we'll do this again if you ever want to yes wow <laughs> I will take your word mm -hmm. <laughs>